Okay, for 7a, we're asked to find this information given this equation, and we also want to graph it. So the first thing it's asked for is the vertex. Now, one formula that's going to be very important in this test because it's used in several problems is the vertex formula. So if you have something written in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, so this is not vertex form, this is ax squared plus bx plus c. We have a formula that we're going to use, and this is going to be the vertex formula. This gives you the x coordinate of your vertex, and once you find that, you can plug the x value back into here to get the y value. Again, this formula is actually used on a couple different problems on this test, so I want to make sure you understand how to use that one. The a and the b, the a is the number in front of the x squared, the b term is in front of just the regular x term, and your c is the number on the end there, which would be 5. We're not going to use it in this case, but that would be your a, b, and c. Let's put those numbers in to this vertex formula. Now we have a negative as part of the formula, but we also have a negative in the number in front of the x. So make sure you don't forget to put those two negatives in there. On the bottom, we have 2 times 4, and we get that. Now what will happen is this, this will give us a positive answer because you have the two negatives. 12 divided by 4, I'll get a 3, so that, I can, that means that I can just reduce this to uh, three halves if I uh, cross cancel that. So that means that now I know that the x coordinate of my vertex is going to be three halves. Now what we know automatically right away as well is the axis of symmetry. The way the axis of symmetry works is that's a dotted line that runs right through the vertex and it basically splits your parabola in half so you can fold one half over on top of itself. We just want to find the equation of that. Axis of symmetry always begins with x equals. If you don't have x equals in your answer, it's going to be marked wrong. You've got to make sure you have x equals there because it's got to be an equation. The number you put after the equal sign is always going to be the x coordinate of your vertex all the time. That's always how you do it. So 3 halves is going to go in here. So again, you don't want to just put 3 halves as your answer. To get it full credit, you need x equals uh, 3 halves on that one. So we've answered those. We still have to find the y value of the vertex. So what we do next is we're going to put 3 halves in for x in our original equation. So we're going to do 4, we'll put 3 halves in for each of the x's. And then we have, uh, when we simplify that, that will give us the y value of the vertex. Now for this, when we multiply those, we're going to make that 4 over 1. When we square that fraction, we get 9 fourths. Now this one, I can reduce this, 12 and 2, I get 6, and so 6 times the 3, I'll get 18. And what will happen then is I can cancel out these 4's. So I get 9 minus 18 plus 5, which means that I get negative 9 plus 5, negative 4 I will get as a result. So negative 4 would be the y value of my vertex. This is also going to be one of the points that's going to appear on my graph. So I've got the first two done. Now I still want to do the intercepts next. The range I'm going to leave for last because I'm going to do the graph first and then get the range off of my uh, graph. So let's do the intercepts next. So in order to do that I need to make some space here so let me erase this one and now we're going to do x-intercept. So x-intercept the way you do that is you're going to put in a zero for the y. That's always the the rule no matter what the equation is. Always how you find x-intercept. Zero in for y. We put that in, we get 0 equals 4x squared minus 12x plus 5. So in order to solve that one, we want to use the techniques that we talked about before in a previous section. We talked about you can solve these kind of problems by factoring. You can also use quadratic formula if you want to. I'm going to do this one by factoring. Now factoring is a couple different approaches we talked about as well. You can do either the grouping method, which I showed you on a previous problem in this answer key, or uh, you can do bottoms up method. So I'm actually going to do it by bottoms up since I haven't shown you one a factoring problem working with that process yet. So let me go ahead and do that on this one. What you do for bottoms up method, factoring method, now you don't have to do it this way. Whatever method works best for you, that's the one that you should use, but I just want to illustrate this one. Multiply the first number times the last number, the first number disappears. So I get x squared minus 12x plus uh, 20. So the four uh, goes away and I turn it into this. And this is easier to factor because now you just look for numbers that 
multiply to make neg uh, positive 20, but add to be negative 12. So if I do that, then numbers that multiply to make 20, 4 and 5 won't work, but I can use 2 and 10. So if I use 2 and 10, and because the last sign is positive and the middle one's negative, that means I'm going to make both of these negative. So that way, negative 2 times negative 10 will give you a positive 20, but they add together to be uh, negative 12. Okay, so that would be the factored form. Now that's not going to be my answer. Remember, if you're going to do it by bottoms up method, the number that originally disappeared there, you have to make sure you put that back in underneath each of the factored pieces. Uh, on the end. So when you simplify that, you'll get x minus 1 half and you'll get x minus uh, 5 halves when this one reduces. You can, you can actually set these both equal to 0 in this form if you're going to use this method with bottoms up method. And if I set both those equal to 0, I'm going to get 1 half and 5 halves. So now I know where the graph will cross the x-axis. It crosses at those two numbers. Okay, so then we got to find the y-intercept. Okay, now the y-intercept, uh, show that one up here as well. So for that, so if we do uh, y-intercept, the difference here is now we put in a zero for x. So if I put a zero in for x, I get four times zero squared minus 12 times zero plus five. I'll get y equals five. Uh, as a result. So that's how you always will, how you find y-intercept, you always put a zero in for x. So a five, that's going to go here. So now, once I have this information, next I want to do a graph. So the graph is actually going to be fairly easy because all you're going to do is just plot these points that you already found already. And so if you've done the, the math correct, it should look like a parabola. If you've got, parabola should be, you know, a U-shaped graph. Now if you get a U-shaped graph like this and there's all of a sudden some weird points over here and you got to run over and, and do some weird lines to connect it, you know one of your points is wrong and you got to go back and check. So the graph is always going to be, is actually a good way to check to see if you did it all uh, correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. First of all, what I have here is I want to plot the, uh, the vertex as the first point. Now three halves is the same thing as 1.5. So one and a half here, and I'm going to go down four. That would be where the, the vertex is going to be at. Now I also have my x-intercepts, one half and five halves. So one half is the same thing as a 0.5, which is going to go right here. The other one, five halves, is 2.5, and that's going to go uh, right there. And then I also have a y-intercept of five. So I'm going to go up five, make a dot there. So notice that all of it looks like a parabola. I don't have any weird point running all the way out over here someplace. I can connect those all together. So I'm just going to draw, draw this down that way. So I come back and hit this. And it's going to basically do the same thing and go back up again. So I've got a, uh, so this right here is actually one continuous line. There's no bump there. So let me make it look a little bit better. Okay, so this is going to be your parabola. Okay, now what the axis of symmetry represent, now it doesn't ask you to do that, but axis of symmetry uh, you have here, it runs through the x coordinate of your vertex. And notice by doing that, it's a dotted line where you can fold one half over on top of itself. If this was drawn perfectly, it would look, you'd have two perfect halves on each side there. Um, but that's how it would do it. It basically splits your parabola in half. And that's what, the, what that means for axis of symmetry. Now there's one more thing they want. They want the range. Okay, so the range would be the y values that the graph uses. Now the lowest y value is down here at negative four, and it, it goes up forever. So my range, I'm gonna put a bracket there with negative four, and that's gonna go to uh, infinity. It keeps on going all the way up. So this is what y values the graph uses.